um, welcome to my studio today. Um, right now I'm going to have to mix up some more um, grisaille for my painting, which I'm doing here. Um, and I've run out of the, uh, the, 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 the white tempera, so what I have to do is just mix it up, um, mix up the white, a new batch, I've got a little jar, new jar. Uh, the last of my egg tempera that I made some time ago, and it's still good, because I, you know, I'm gonna, it's, it's fine, it's good, it's good. Just the thinners in it and, and the varnish in it. Um, so I've got everything set. So I'll just carry on and, and, and do it, and you can see, you know, I'll explain what I'm doing. Um, first thing you're going to have to do, uh, you're going to have to get some of this uh, white pigment, which I, is Stevenson's. Um, a friend of mine got this, I think a friend of mine sent this from Canada. But you know, any good colour merchant will have a titanium white. Don't use zinc white, it just doesn't have the opacity that uh, titanium does. Uh, the titanium white kind of uh, replaces what used to be the old flake white. And you know, obviously, due to health concerns, you can't be breathing in the, you know, kind of breathing with the, the lead dust from the flake white. It's just, you know, just a no brainer. So, um, I need to put some of this here. There we go. Put the knife back because I've got I've got quite a lot to do with this underpainting. I've got a portrait I'm doing as well, a large portrait, so I'm going to need quite a bit of this. But I've also got to bear in mind that how much of this I've got left. Where is it? Yeah, that you know, how much of that I've got. Settled a bit, and then uh, it's been in the fridge for some time. It's still okay, but the the varnish and the um, the egg and stuff, and some of the some of the ingredients kind of separated. So I'm gonna. Uh, there's a cloth. There's a cloth. Mm. And that cloth's around the back here. There we go. Yeah, gonna give that a little whisk around. Get all those bits. Actually, I like the smell of it. I love the smell of the varnishes and the resins. You know, it's kind of nice. I'll get high on it, so yeah. <laughs> stuff. Mm. All right then, done that. So what we do is gonna pour a bit in the centre there. And then, oops, too much. And then just, I don't know if you can see that one. I'm gonna adjust that camera down a little bit. So. See what I'm doing on here. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay, so like, kind of keep mixing it up, and you want to get it a consistency of like, um, consistency of like, um, well, like a tube paint, toothpaste, whatever. You don't want it too runny, and you don't want it like too, like really, really kind of like a. You don't want it like cement. So. Yeah, and when it, when you kind of mix it in, you can see like the egg white that it, it has a let me see it has a bit of a yellow tint because of the egg, but you know, egg yolk when it dries it goes transparent anyway, so you know, don't worry about that. Up. This method of painting called grisaille, I learned this back in um, 2014. 
before I used to just paint in acrylics and sometimes oil and I try to do the whole painting in the, the shadows and the colours all in one go like I'd move across a, a, I'd move across a white canvas all in one go to try and do everything I didn't know anything about glazing or, or and it was not it was not you know, it was it got it was quite a lot of work to do and it was just sometimes the results were a bit of hit and miss but um once i've learned this process which is called um indirect painting or some people call it indirect painting it's not directly not directly doing it straight away you're splitting it up the process up into two parts basically you're you're painting your tonals, your, your, your lights and sh darks and shadows and all, all that in between in one layer and then you're adding the colour in the second layer um, and this gives you an opportunity to really set your, your values in, the, in, in your lights and darks and uh, retain, the, retain the, uh, the dramatic effect of your pictures because sometimes when we try and we've got a pencil drawing and we try and translate it into colour straight away, sometimes we kind of lose the, the mood and the atmosphere and the drama of it because we, we don't understand that the, each colour has its own light and dark value and it's not always easy to see it. But um, yeah, okay, everything is mixed up now. I'm going to get the lumps out. I, I, I was I learned this, this technique when I went to Vienna and I was in a workshop by um, an artist called um, Philip Rubinoff Jacobson who studied under the great master Ernest Fuchs and Ernest Fuchs learned a lot of the, a lot of the painting techniques of the old masters and um, it was a great time. I travelled with um, uh, Professor Phil and an assistant, artist assistant Manticora, we went down to uh, Italy, we drove all the way to Italy uh, with another uh, another student and uh, uh, and it was a real eye-opener and I've never really gone back to the way I used to paint before, this was such a, a changing point in the way I painted and I've, and I've never changed, I've never gone back to, to what I used to paint and I continue painting this method. So okay. So I got that nice and mixed up like you can see. Yeah. And uh, what I'm gonna add to it, you don't have to because this 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 varnish that we mixed up I did for the grisaille I showed you in a previous video and you want to check that out. The, I'll put it in the link. Um, it's a very fast drying one. I mean, I've painted it in a matter of like 15 minutes. It's been touch drying. Sometimes you don't want it. You want to, you want to be able to manipulate the, your, your, your shades. So, I mean, especially in the climate I'm in. I'm in the tropics. It's very hot. Sometimes it's just too fast. So, I mean, I could, I could ask Prof, Prof, uh, Professor Phil for a more slow drying one. But I'll have to go. I mean, I'll be going on another course to do that. But, um, in this one, you can slow it down a little bit by adding um, tube oil colours, which has got a higher um, higher content of linseed oil in it, which will make it look slow slow it down a bit. I don't want to miss. I don't want to add anything to this that I don't know about that I haven't learned. So I'm just going to add some of this into it to, to make it a little bit slower to dry. And even then, it really dries fast. Still dries fast. I mean, I've had I worked on some of this last night and it's still and, 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 and it's dried now which is really kind of unheard when you work with oil colours you know how it's nice to be like oh god they just take so long to dry but it depends on what mediums and varnishes you're using in the medium but this one is, is, is dry um, let's see I'm going to work some more of that so right some more titanium white in a tube stick it in there Yeah, I'm gonna add like 50%. I'm gonna add another 50% in there. So, oops. just 
but this is this is loads. I'm grand happy with this. This is this is gonna last me for a while. Give it a good mix in. Don't want it. And get it all mixed in. If we don't mix it in right, then some parts of the paint are going to have faster drying times than another part. And my fear is that, you know, as, as it, that stresses the paint film, I don't want that to happen. Lovely piece of paint here, nice paint, love it. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. Okay, and we got that. My little jar, which I put a sponge in the bottom to kind of like soak it with um, white spirit. Actually, I would have put um, turpentine, turpentine would have been great, but right now, we all know there's a a global um, shortage of turpentine due to the pandemic you can't get turpentine for level money I mean I've been looking 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 for months either I, I, it's, I think because you know, you get it's tapped from trees because of the pandemic there's been a there's been a serious shortage and the prices of it have just gone so high that no one's just not buying it the place everywhere I used to find it on this island can't get it anywhere so I'm going to use white spirit and I try and make it a good quality one. I don't want too much um, impurities in it. It's a good one. I don't get, you know, don't get one of the industrial ones. Hopefully, it works. Well, it works. It's a, it's a solvent as well. Okay. Once I've got that in there, you just put. A dollop. Come on, come off there, you awkward dollop. You get in there. Okay, you better drop right in the middle. Yeah, just straight on the side. There you go. <laughs> All right, let's scrape any residue. Yeah, and this is a great, great, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great opaque colour, it will just colour, it will just cover everything. Other whites that you get, like the zinc white, uh, all the whites are there, and zinc white, I think the iron in too. Zinc white is great for its, its purpose, but it's not a covering paint, it's very white, it's very kind of almost bluey kind of very clean white but it's it's good if you want to do soft fake um trans semi-transparent layers that's it okay got it in there that's plenty and i'll check that every now and again to make sure it hasn't dried out it i put i really soaked up the yeah yeah i really soaked up the sponge there with the white spirit but every now and again I'll in this, keep it in the fridge just in case I'll keep checking out because I don't want it to end up going hard um, all right let's put that away and next you know, this still a bit left eh? that's good both those good back in the fridge so next I'm gonna mix up a bit of a um, uh, I've called a grisai uh, in the next few minutes so give me a minute I'll be back